I've got it, mates. I've got it. Farewell, my Constance, the favourite tune of Miss Jennifer Mansfield. Good evening, John. I intend to memorialise it and ruthlessly melt her heart. This is... I've only been done. This is a fake. Would you mind stopping that, John? I'm feeling rather out of sorts. What's the matter, Freddy? Oh, it's just a day without meaning to. It's possible that I may have inadvertently administered a snub. A snub? Yes. You know Jorkins, whose exact seniority in my office is so unsatisfactorily unclear with regard to my own. See, today I attempted to extend a hand of friendship. I offered him some snuff. But I made the offer seated. You didn't stand up. Exactly. In a moment of bonhomie, I'm staying in my seat. Um, do you think that was a snub? How are you sitting? Yeah, it's in the snub area. Oh, what a tangled web you two weave with your amusing attempts at gentle behaviour. No, look, Leighton Bonner has died. By election. By election? Emily, bring tea! And which way will you be voting, Horatio? Vote? I won't be voting. Voting is for dunces. But Horatio, you must vote. Vote to keep the vote out of the hands of idiots like me for generations to come. Speak for yourself. But, Freddie, everyone knows intelligence is proportional to income. Right, so the Duke of Northumberland, a man who believes that if he eats enough chicken, he will himself be able to fly, is 6,000 times cleverer than you or I. Things are the way they are for a reason. Next, I'll be giving the vote to dogs. Or women. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, can you just imagine if you were able to vote? <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? Yes, sir, it would. Yeah, just imagine, Emily, you with your, your woman's brain trying to decide who to vote for. <laughs> All I know is if I could vote, I'll vote to keep the Jews out. Mm. Good point. Good point. Yes. <laughs> Ah, the park. The park. The park is a wonderful thing, wouldn't you agree? Well, it makes a pleasant contrast from sitting in the drawing room listening to my father die. Yes. What a wonderful hedge. Indeed. Wondrous hedging. Now tell me, would you classify the texture of this hedge as rough Smooth or just normal? Very interesting question which I would like to look into further. Perhaps a royal commission should be established to ascertain the exact. Horatio, I'm telling you, it was such a delightful touch. Ah, nothing like a good old fashioned bit of touching. Hmm? That's the excellent thing about my Sarah, her being a radical. I mean, she has no problem at all with touching, rubbing, or just humping away like a couple of Frenchers. <coughs> it's just the touch. Should I worry? You're thinking, does this make her a bit of a molly -wop? Exactly. Touching me like that, isn't that the action of a huspus? If it feels good, do it. That's what the good book says. Is that right? Mm. Well, anyway, I was thinking with Jennifer, now might be the time for me to hire a nice warm room and arrange for us to have a marathon naked touching oh, John, session. Oh, John, and... John, John, no. No? Not out in the open. Never out in the open. Listen, you can get away with almost anything as long as you don't admit you're doing anything. Hmm? Observe. Madam, may I please have one of those cockle packets? You see? Remarkable. Sarah? Hello, Horatio. Right. Pleasantry's done. Shall we get down to some totally uninhibited and even quite painfully liberated lovemaking? Horatio, I've been thinking. Of course you have. You do it so brilliantly. Right. Where do you want me? Shall I get the old chap out? Or would you like to have a little rummage around for him a little bit? Today I don't want to have sexual intercourse, Horatio. I've been talking with my friend and... Uh, wait, wait, which, which friend? Oh, don't you worry. Now, listen, would it be fair to say that you are a man of few opinions? Opinions? Are you joking? I have opinions. My opinion is that my cream stick needs a yank. Horatio, that's not... I mean, what, for example, is your opinion on the by-election? My opinion is that next they'll be giving the vote to dogs. Or women. 
Are you making a joke? Now you know how I feel about jokes, Horatio. While you tell your jokes, a fly buzzes over a child dying on a street in Manchester. An old washerwoman has her head crushed under the boot of a Prussian autocrat. Brains oozing out like adulterated milk. How funny is your joke now? It's not quite so funny. This is bad. This is most seriously difficult. What's the matter, Freddy? It's the snub. Everything's falling apart on my ears. Emily, bring tea! I had a plan, you see, an idea to put right the original snub. Yeah, so? I offered Jorkin some bun. Slice of my bun. Perfect. Everyone likes a nice bit of bun? This is my thinking exactly, but he refused. He refused the bun? Well, surely this is a return snub. No, but the piece I offered was my last segment. Ah, oh, so so the refusal could itself be a kind of politeness. Precisely. His action is impossible to read. Where do I stand? What shall I do? Perhaps a letter. Find out where you stand via a letter. A, a note would not be uh, unacceptable, would it, uh, Horatio? Mm. Oh, I don't know, Freddy. What do you want me to say? Hmm? Are we obsessed over such matters? A snub here, a snubbing there. A child on the streets of Manchester breathes its last breath. A bee buzzes and is killed by a Prussian autocrat. Do you see? I think so. I am deeply involved in the campaign against adultery with milk. I can't be expected to care about the humdrum concerns of my two greatest friends. Tea for the gentleman. Cook's off sick, so I'll try to make some of that stuff. What stuff? Stuff you make with the thing. Thing mixed up with the other things. You put it in the big hot... Cake. Cake! Anyway, come out runny, so I drank it. Sarah? Is that Madeline's carriage I saw leaving as I arrived? Yes, probably. Why? Hmm. Well, that explains a lot. Yes, now it all fits together. Like some hideous jigsaw puzzle depicting a horrible incident. Well, that sounds like a good idea. It's about time somebody pushed the medium of jigsaw much, much further. Yes. You've been talking to Madeline, and she doesn't like me. What on earth makes you think she doesn't like you? Primarily the time she spat in my face. Oh, a woman spits in your face, and immediately you assume she doesn't like you. You are so quick to judge, Horatio. Tell me you do not talk about me with Madeline. I do not talk about you with Madeline. Did you just say that because I prefaced the words you do not talk about me with Madeline with the instruction, tell me? Yes. The truth is we do talk about you. And what do you say? I can't say because it's private. How can it be private? It's about me. It's regarding me. The words are rightfully mine. Tell them me. Horatio, look, we don't see anything unusual. Just what people say about other people. Like what? Like, I don't know, one might say, oh, doesn't Mr. So-and-so have a strange-shaped head? So you think I have a strange-shaped head? No, it was an example! Well, I think it's very interesting that you chose that particular example, I must say. Oh, my God, it's a monstrosity! Is it, is it too big? Or, or too small? Or somehow, both at once? <laughs> Horatio, I'm concerned. Do you think I look Egyptian? I'm sorry? I've been measuring my head and I think I might be Egyptian. I don't think you look the least bit Egyptian. Now, listen, I need to talk to you about Jorkins. I've had no reply to my notes. Three days and no reply. I mean, could it be part of some strange and complex uber snub? Possibly. Although, by whom did you send it? Oh, why, Emily. Mm. Emily. You trusted Emily. You don't think she delivered it? Not unless Jorkins resides up the chimney with Father Christmas. Oh, no! Obviously, you'll have to fire her. Fire Emily? But, I mean, it was probably only a slip-up. Out with the old, in with the new. She's a crapulist. Why are you so reluctant to be done with her? I'm not. Well, why don't you do it, then? Hmm? Go on. Fire her. Yes, sir, I will. Certainly will. Thank you, Emily. Go on, then. Do it. We'll do it. About to do it. For now, it's the time it will happen. Up. Don! Dash! Anyway. Freddy, you must fire Emily. Mr. 
Mr Kilburn, sir. Emily, please sit down. Uh, now, listen. I have my suspicion that um, my note intended for Mr Jorkins may not have been delivered. Oh, no. Sorry, sir. Oh, dear, that was the other day, wasn't it? Hmm. I was going to get up half an hour early and pop round with it. But then I realised that meant getting up before I'd gone to bed. And I got confused, sir. And I was doing the fires and I must have... <sighs> I am sorry. Yes, well, I'm very, very angry now. Um, with you. Of course. I'm going to have to most seriously reprimand you. Your nightdress, Emily. Not take it off. No, no, do it up. Do it up, God. Now, listen to me. I'm considering the ultimate reprimand. All oh, right, so I'm fired. Better get my things out. No, don't go. I order you not to go. No, stay. Stay and receive the ultimate reprimand. You are, Emily, sometimes a bad person. That's it. That is it. I'm sorry to be so. Cruel, that will be your final warning. Of course, sir. I would deliver another note directly. You've been uncommonly generous with your final warnings. Oh, Twelve or thirteen final warnings. That is the usual threshold, Emily, and it has been very, very nearly reached. Right. <coughs> is that your father dying? Yes. That will be my father dying. Right. I'll notice that you've chosen a sort of um, less than traditional variety of piping for your curtains. In France, there is a saying that a curtain without the proper binding is like a horse without a mane. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, you could you could argue that the that the curtain is the most important part of the furnishings because it's the it's the only part visible to the to the man on the street. Yes, although if one furnished one's house according to the taste of the pedestrians outside it, a very strange collection would ensue. Oh yeah, yeah. Although, although. One must be mindful of the tastes of the common man on the street in order to more confidently reject them. Yes, quite so. <coughs> Like, see, we were just talking about you. Oh, so it's like that, is it? Sit down, Horatio. There was no ill talk. Mr. Freddy Kilburn. Hello. Package a note for you, sir. Oh, why? Thank you. Ah, from Jorkins. His reply to my note. Now we shall see if we're at social war or not. Well, what does he say? He says, received your letter. Yours, Tom. Received your letter. Yours, Tom. Now, what the hell does he mean by that? It comes attached. A cheese. What? What is this? It's a cheese. Is this an unspeakable insult or an act of generous reconciliation, Horatio? What, what is the meaning of this cheese? Let me see it. Is everything all right, or is that a retaliatory snub such as never been seen? This cheese is so small, it's almost ridiculously small. I fear with this cheese he mocks you, Freddy. Do you think? I'm afraid so. Oh. I think I, I think I see a way through this minefield. I will return this cheese, offering thanks, but saying that I do not personally care for cheese and that he should enjoy his kind gift himself. If it is an insult, it will have been redoubled. If it is not, then good manners will have finally and triumphantly won the day. Bravo! Take that, Jorkins! Jennifer! 
Hello, my dear Jennifer. Not you, another Jennifer, the other one. Jennifer. Ah, oh, my friends. Black news, I'm afraid, John. What? What is it? The gossip. It's all over town. Jennifer and her Captain Wilkins, he is making overtures. They are not being rebuffed. Ah, uh, no, John. Dear old John. But Horatio, I don't understand. The touching. Surely that means I have prior claim. I have placed my farthing on the billiard table. And with those stupid words you reveal just what a lovely ignorant ass you are. But I touched her Thompson. Exactly. You were her sport, John. Bit of upper, lower, lower, middle class fluff. How could she look you in the eye at the altar when she knew the exact size and shape of your angry hobgoblin? So I was nothing but a passing fancy man. The shame of it. I just have to go out to the kitchen. Emily! I have a task for you. Is it sexual in nature? No, it... God, no. Can we let that incident... That series of incidents. That series of incidents be forgotten? Very well, sir. Pleasure to be of use. It's actually how I prefer it. A bit rough, like. Emily, listen. I need you to go into the drawing room, pretend to be cleaning, and then come back out and tell me what they're saying about my head. <sighs> Very good, sir. Well? I don't appear to be talking about your head at all, sir. Not at all. In moderation. All right, let's stop all this tittle-tattle behind each other's backs. We're men of the world, we can speak our minds. Come on, what do you think about my head? Your head? It's a perfectly normal head. I've seen you staring at it, both of you. Even now, as we speak, you stare at it quite shamelessly. Oh, Horatio, there's no choice but to look at the other man's head while speaking to them. Oh, yes, of course. The perfect alibi. No, Horatio, for the thousandth time, Madeline and I have never, ever said a word about your head. Well, what is it you talk about, oh, then? Horatio. Do you say that I'm too fond of sausages? No. Do you claim that I'm a beachcomber? No. Do you imply me a pig stroker or a secret horologist? No, Horatio, please, can we not leave this subject? Really, it's nothing to worry about. Sarah, please, give me something. A hint, a clue, a sniff of what it is you say of me. Horatio, look, this is ridiculous, but if you really, really desire to know, then... For example, Madeleine and I have on occasion discussed that perhaps you are a little... that you too easily take on board the opinions of others rather than forming your own. What? What? I'm rather surprised you wish to see me today, Miss Mansfield, since you and Captain Wilkins are apparently so close. As a matter of fact, Captain Wilkins has returned to his regiment. Oh, I see. Now, perhaps you'll let me help you with your exertions. Oh. I, I, I really, I really must object, Miss Mansfield. To what? To the... What are you objecting to? To the... To the rather... Look, am I, am I just your good time fellow while the captain is off with his regiment butchering darkies for medals. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about the... about the, the, the touching. Touching? What touching? You know, the, the nice touching. I touch you, you touch me. What a horrible suggestion. There has been no touching. You know what, Horatio? You were right. Of course I was right. I'm always right. What was I right about this time? About Miss Mansfield and the whole... Oh my... Horatio, it's him. Captain Wilkins! God, he's quite the figure of a man, isn't he? I bet he could hold down a whole tribe of Afghans. Good God, look at the size of the beast. No wonder the women go for yeah, the Yeah, all right. Bodies. Have you seen him? At the bar? Yes, Wilkins. No. Jorkins! There, talking to that great hunk of a man! That's Jorkins, the snubber, talking to Wilkins, the... 
bastard. My God, what could they be saying to each other? Yes, yeah, infuriating, isn't it? <laughs> They're laughing. They're probably laughing about us. Well, who knows? There's literally no way of telling. This is the agony of so-called modern life. What's that? Jorkins is eating cheese. The cheese I sent him. He's giving it to, to Wilkins. He mocks me in public. What? What's that? That? They're laughing about? Heads? What? You're right. He's making a shape. A shape like a head. It... Good God, that's my head. Right. I'll tell you what we should do. You take revenge. Run them through a duel. Yes, or do to them as they do to us. Talk about them. Talk, talk about them? Yes. See, there is nothing they could do if I, for example, were to say I knew Captain Wilkins is the sort of man who likes to kick dogs. Does he? I couldn't possibly say. Or, oh, okay, we could say uh, Jorkins. He, Jorkins, he once got saved from drowning by a German. <laughs> Did he? Oh, how embarrassing. <laughs> uh, Jorkins um, smells like a woman. Uh, Wilkins uh, buries his turds in the garden like a cat. Oh, this is great. <laughs> it's sweet revenge. He's... He... Horatio, Jorkins is putting my cheese in the rubbish bin. Right. That's it. Let me see to this pair of scoundrels. Hello, Wilkins. Didn't you used to cook breakfast for me and old Voty Johnson up at Cambridge? Very sure. Here's a conversation starter for you. I hear that the foul stench in your back garden is provided by your own personal shit supply. What? Not quite such the big man now, are you? <laughs> and Jorkins, who does this remind you of, hmm? Help me, Fritz. I'm going up. I'm going. I'm going under like a child. I really don't know what you mean. Right. Well, no hard feelings. Hmm? Let's shake on it. You don't mind if I have a little fiddle on your pipe as it goes, do you? Hmm? It is wonderful, isn't it? How we can have sport with our social inferiors. Not a thing can be said. Isn't that right? Maximus! <laughs> <laughs> no, don't! <laughs> <laughs>